Today, we're gonna to be executing Rust code in Python using Python Monkey. We're gonna compile a Rust library into WebAssembly and load that WebAssembly from Python and execute it using Python Monkey. Python Monkey is a Python library for executing JavaScript and WebAssembly code in Python and vice versa. And we're gonna use it heavily for this tutorial. Uh, we're also gonna use WASM and BindGen. This will actually make this tutorial a little bit more complicated, but if you wanna expand on this project and do more with your library, it'll come in handy. It's high level library and tooling for uh, Rust WebAssembly. Well, anyways, uh, let's get started. So I'm gonna put everything that we're gonna to do today in this uh, GitHub repository. So it's gonna be linked in the description. You can check this out if you wanna just skip to running the code. Um, and uh, before we can really get too into it, we have to install some software. So since we're gonna be using Rust, we're gonna to have to compile, sorry, we're gonna to have to install the Rust compiler and uh, uh, package manager cargo. So if you just go to, um, uh, I think rustup.rs, or in this case, I'm on rustlang.org, um, you, you can find instructions for installing Rust. Uh, here's what I'm gonna type. Uh, I already have it installed, so I'm just going to cancel this. Uh, the next thing we're going to need is um, is WASM pack, which is what we're going to be using for compiling our Rust into WebAssembly. Now, keep in mind we can use the standard Rust compiler for WebAssembly, but uh, just to make things a bit easier, we're using the WASM BindGen ecosystem for this uh, project. So, to install WASM pack, it's just cargo install WASM pack. The next thing we're going to have to install is a version of Python that's greater or equal to 3.8. So as long as you have 3.8 or higher, you're good to go. If you don't have Python installed, uh, just look up uh, how to install Python on, on your operating system. All right, next we're going to install the Python Monkey library. So that's just going to be pip3 install Python Monkey. And uh, awesome, we've got that installed. So we've got all the prerequisite software installed for us to begin. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna use Cargo to generate a new template for a Rust library. Uh, we're just gonna type Cargo new dash dash lib, and then we're gonna call it my Rust library. But you can call it anything you want. Uh, we'll see if by ls that there's uh, now a folder called my Rust library. I'm just gonna see cd into there. And uh, we're gonna see that it generated a few uh, files. So there's cargo.toml in the root directory and lib.rs in the source directory. Uh, we can look at cargo.toml and see that it has some basic kind of template filler stuff and a section down here where we can add our dependencies. It's kind of like a package.json file from MPN JavaScript world or uh, uh, requirements.txt for Python. And we can also look at the library template that it started. But we're not going to use any of this, so let's just delete this for now. And uh, we're going to paste in a new function. Uh, we want to add a Rust function that will just add two numbers and return the result. This is going to be a super simple example. Just a little Rust tip. Um, when you're returning something, you could just Enter it like this instead. Cool. Um, however, we're gonna have to add a couple more things to this for it to work nicely with WASM and BindGen and for it to be exposed uh, in the WASM and BindGen package that's gonna be generated. So at the top, we're gonna say use WASM and BindGen oops, prelude. And uh, above this, this function where we're going to add this macro wasm find them. Awesome. So with that, we'll be good to go with our uh, Rust library, but we have to add the wasm bind gen as a dependency to our project. So let's edit our cargo.toml. And uh, I'm just gonna I'm just going to fill this one in with a other information here. So this is where we put the name of our project. Maybe I'll do, you know, YouTube example 
or um, I don't know. I don't know what a good name would be. We, you, you can put any name here you want. Let's say um, Adder. I don't know. And then uh, we will specify that we need WAS and BindGen as one of the dependencies in this project. Awesome, so we're good to go. The next command that we're gonna run is going to compile uh, the Rust library we just wrote, as well as generate a JavaScript package for us to use. The command for that is wasm-pack build, and then we're gonna set the target to be Node.js. Awesome, our code compiled and everything looks good, but there's one more thing that we have to do before we can execute this code in Python. Uh, currently, at the moment, since Python Monkey just released, it's missing some features regarding Node compatibility. This means that some of the Node.js specific code that's generated from this command needs to be updated to work with Python Monkey. I'll show you exactly what those changes are, but I'll also just send a script that you can use to uh, execute this fine as if none of that even mattered. And keep in mind, this is only temporary. Uh, in a few more months, Python Monkey will have support for many more of these Node.js libraries, and uh, uh, this won't be required anymore. The code in question that has the Node.js specific code is in package and then the name of your uh, library, so adder.js. We'll see on lines 13 and 14, uh, it uses path from Node.js and fs, which aren't available in Python. Uh, they're using this to join two strings together, and in this case, to open a file and get a byte array. We can easily replace these with pure JS and Python equivalents. I'm just going to replace path with that, and then we're going to join it on the forward slash string. Cool. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit more involved. We're going to probably create a new function in JavaScript called uh, pi read file sync. That's going to take in a path and uh, it's going to use the open function in Python to open the file and then convert it to a byte array. Python.exec is a Python library feature that lets you execute Python code within JavaScript that's being executed within Python. Uh, I'm just going to define a new function within it called get bytes. And uh, this will return a byte array of the file content. I was missing the F there for the file. And then we can just execute this code, this Python code from JavaScript, and this should read our WebAssembly file and return the bytes array fine. So all we have to do is just const bytes equals pi read file sync with the path that we define up above. Awesome, so let's put our code to the test, see if I made any mistakes, totally possible. Surprising if it didn't happen. And uh, we'll call it main.py. And uh, I'm just going to copy and paste just some, some code in here, specific. So we're gonna import Python monkey as PM. And then we're going to open our library, let's say my lib equals pm.require package slash, and then our actual JavaScript library that we're gonna be using, sorry, dot slash package, since it's relative based off of your current directory, slash adder, since that was the name of the package. Then we're gonna test just executing the add function that we wrote in Rust. Well, let's put it to the test and see if everything worked out properly. We should just be able to run this program with Python 3 main.py. And it looks like we came across one error. 
Yeah, so it looks like the error here is that I should have passed path here instead of file name. So if we give this a run, python3 main.py, then we'll get the expected result of 3.0. Um, however, it's kind of a pain to modify this code. And in fact, this code is actually generated. It's not written by a person. So this is going to change and it's going to keep on regenerating each time it's compiled. So we'll need a better solution to keep on running this each time. And uh, that solution is to use a build script that automatically replaces this. So I'm just going to call this build.sh and then build.sh. I'm just going to paste in uh, this, this following script. And this, this will be available on the GitHub. So let's just see if that works. We should do it with bash build. Awesome, everything works. And we'll just go over what it does. So first it executes wasm pack build dash dash target no JS. This will compile the Rust and create that Python package. Then it replaces the Node.js specific code with uh, Python specific and uh, pure JS specific code, just like I did before, but automatically each time. So we'll just run build.sh from now when we want to build new code. Well, fantastic. We compiled a Rust library and executed in Python using WebAssembly. But uh, maybe just to fill, further illustrate the point, I'll add one more function to our Rust code and try and execute it from Python. Let's add a subtraction function. It'll just be the same as this one, but um, subtraction instead of addition. So we're going to call it sub. And we're just going to return a minus b. So anyways, let's give this a shot. We're going to try 1 minus 2. This should give us negative 1. Oh, well, we've got to compile it first before we can do that. All right, now let's try this again. Python 3 main.py. And we get an interesting number. We expected negative 1, but this number is way too big to be negative 1. And the reason for that is that in our Rust code, we were using, uh, we were returning an unsigned number. So as a result, this underflowed and went to the highest maximum value for an unsigned integer, a 32-bit integer. So we'll just change our Rust code to instead return a signed number, let's say. Oops, sorry. Wrong place. Source. Is this enough to get it working? Nope. Awesome. So let's give this a shot. Great. And we get negative one. I think this uh, il illustrates how Rust is quite a low level language and you'll come across things like this that you would never see in Python. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, just to summarize what we did, we wrote a Rust library, compiled it to WebAssembly and loaded it in Python using Python Monkey. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you're curious about more Python Monkey and Rust and WebAssembly videos, check out my channel. I've got another video where I compile Rust to, sorry, compile C to WebAssembly using mscripten and load that in Python. Just like uh, that video, uh, using Rust to WebAssembly can be very good for increasing the speed or, or safety of your Python libraries if you want to use it. But with that, uh, thanks for watching the video and uh, see you around.